onto f7 uh, very similar here to f5 the first point that i make that knowledge comes up from f3 and feeds into p2 corporate reporting so again wait until you've passed p2 before you get rid of your f7 notes because just about everything at f7 will be relevant to p2 the paper will be a mixture of words and numbers um, question one will be a 25 mark on consolidation question Question two will be 25 marks on final accounts. Questions three, 25 marks analysis, mixture of cash flows, ratios, and interpretations. Um, sometimes it could be a whole ratio, sometimes it could be a cash flow with certain uh, ratios required, etc. Generally speaking, questions one and two, and if it's a cash flow, the cash flow part of question three tend to be done quite well. Question four is 15, question five is 10 marks, can be on any topic of the syllabus. And I think I mentioned in the next slide that you can't question spot um, because the syllabus is so big. Uh, if you try and just do a couple of accounting standards and hope that they come up, you may well find that they don't. As with all papers, again, do answer every question, do answer every part of every question. Question one, two, and three A, again, tend to be numerically based, but you can't pass the exam on those alone, or it's very difficult to pass on those alone. You may be working on maybe 60 marks. 50 out of 60 is not very easy to do. So you have got to make sure that you can write about accounting as well as do the numbers. Again, workings are important. There's a little bit more flexibility in your workings here as opposed to, let's see, the F6 element. But whatever workings you do, cross reference them to your end solution. So if you've done a goodwill calculation as a working, put it working to goodwill. And when you feed the number into your statement to financial position, attach W2 against the figure so that the markers can cross reference on there. Again, I mentioned, mentioned do not question spot, virtually impossible. When you come to practice past questions, uh, quite often, again, when I'm in class, I'll set a question to, for my students to do. And one of the first things that they do is they go, well, they read the question and then they go to the back of the revision question bank where they'll find the answers. And they'll read the answer and they'll go, Yes, I agree with that. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah, done. Finish the question. That is not question. That is not practicing questions. That is auditing a solution. Please, by all means, read the answer, but do the answer yourself first. Then check up. It doesn't matter if you make a mistake, you learn by your mistakes. That's the whole point of practicing questions. So do not audit the answers. Again, do not leave everything to the last minute. The syllabus is so huge that if you decide, ah, two weeks to the exam, time to do my F7 studies, there is no way you'll get every bit of the F7 syllabus done. So you've got to plan your three to four months in advance of taking the exam. One of the reasons why students do fail this exam is quite often we see the accountants people working in accountancy failing the exam because they doing the studies and they say ah f7 it's financial reporting i work in financial reporting so i know the subject i don't need to do anything i can go into the exam with no preparation that's the wrong attitude to take because what you are doing is you're studying for an accountancy exam it's not exactly the same as work in accounting so please don't believe that you're an accountant you can pass this financial reporting exam you might but it is one of the reasons students fail